guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Stephanie and I am the flower fanatic. Anyways, I'm in my greenhouse today. We built this beautiful greenhouse. I cannot say enough good things about how much I love it. So about a year ago during this time, which is so crazy because our winter is totally different this year. There is no way we could have dug in the soil. Um, but I have been getting a lot of questions about the greenhouse. So I thought I would do a little update video, give you the pros on why you should build one. And there are just a few cons, not super big deal, but a few things I've learned this year that I would have done a little bit differently, known I would run into some of these problems. Anyway, so the first thing I wanna talk about is how do I heat my greenhouse? So let's take a look at this little tiny heater. I do not know where it came from. I've already mentioned this in one of my videos, but this has been the That's biggest- the Home Depot. Oh, Home Depot. Okay. I think we got it from your mom. My husband's videoing today. So nope. guys, that's a Home Depot. Just a little side note. It's my birthday today. So I'm really excited. What I wanted for my birthday today was to have my husband help me clean out this greenhouse, which what I mean by help is watch him clean it. So he's out here. I didn't even ask him because he knew I wanted to do this video, but it was so messy. So, okay. Before I start talking about the heaters, that is another huge pro about my greenhouse is I can be messy in here. And if you know me, which you guys, I don't know, obviously you don't know me because you're not living in my house with me, but I am really messy. Not when it comes to my yard, but my house can get really messy. So I'm kind of wild. I can get in here, just throw dirt around and it is fine. So that is a huge plus for me. So here's another heater right here. We just recently got it from Home Depot. It was about 50 bucks. So they're both fairly cheap. Was it $50? Right about so, there. Uh, anyway, so this winter we've gotten colder temperatures than we've experienced in how many years would you say like oh, 10? Yeah. I know I think 20, 20 years. And I think a lot of us are experiencing that. You might ex be experiencing that where you live, but it got down to negative one degrees. I wasn't prepared for that. And so when it got down to negative one in here, the temperatures were about, it was having a hard time keeping them above 35 degrees or 40 degrees. So the easy fix for that was just to get another heater or at more heavy duty heaters. But another issue that came with that is we had to turn this one on to full power. I know these are little things, but this makes a big difference. I hope I'm not boring you to death with all this heating insights. But once we put that on full blast, we had that one on full blast, the breaker tripped. And so I came out one morning, my stock seedlings right here were looking fabulous. I have some more right there. And unfortunately, a lot of them had frost on the top of the soil. They are actually recovering. There are a few that aren't gonna make it. I can tell right here, these ones aren't gonna make it. So that was no good. It was 30 degrees in here, so it could have been worse. I also could have brought these seeds in, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna be bringing seeds in and out of my house. That would just be, you know, defeat the purpose of having a greenhouse. And I, in my opinion, next winter, we're just gonna put an in-wall heater right here. Oh, a yeah. little 30 amp in-wall heater right there thermostat controlled problem solved so let's take a look at the next pro look at this floor it is nothing pretty so there are so many people when they're building a greenhouse they put stone in or some sort of tile i would not recommend that to be honest because this way i can just pour water on the ground i can be messy if i had tile and stone i couldn't do that and that's nice we just left it how it was this is how it was when we built it and so the water just seeps through and we don't have to worry about cleaning that. That's been a huge plus. So if you want it to look really pretty, put in some brick and stone. If you don't care, just leave your flooring as it is. There's a bunch of sand, so the sand is really nice. So I've really loved that. Honestly, I'll just be like watering all my plants, pouring the bucket in, the water will be splashing everywhere. Oh, don't wear nice shoes or nice clothes. I was almost gonna ruin these ones before I realized these are my nice shoes. I gotta go put on my messy shoes. So I wanted to talk about the size now. Sorry, I'm trying to get all these thoughts in my head. There's so much I want to say. I'm trying to address a lot of the questions that you guys had. So this is an eight by 10 greenhouse. We built it really tall. These are eight feet to this edge from the outside um, grade. So we've had a few questions about the more minute details. And so we, I love having the height just because it feels so much more open here. I don't feel, feel claustrophobic. So I'm loving the space, but it's amazing how much stuff you can cram in here. But if you are wanting to really like start your own cutting garden business, you want to sell 
a lot. I would definitely recommend going a little bit bigger, but for me, it's just for hobby purposes. I like to give a few bouquets to friends and family, bring them inside, just really enjoy them. On that note, I want to just add yeah. one thing. <laughs> so you see the little shelf behind here. We added that after the fact, and what's cool about it is you could see how the trays fit up in there. And so you can actually just load that with plants. Once it's so nice to have all this extra storage. It just makes a huge difference. And then we added this little pole, and this is where I can hang my container plants where I want to get a little early start. My hanging baskets, which are not my, actually my favorite thing to do. I might not even do them this year. But if you are into container pots, hanging baskets, definitely this is gives you a head start. I was at my nursery today that's what i did for my birthday i wanted to go to nursery i wanted to do this video for you guys anyways i went there and there was this most stunning geranium i love this annual and it is huge and the only way in my climate that you can really get it that big and have it be that beautiful is you need a greenhouse you need to stick it in here make sure you overwinter it and so i definitely think i'm going to do that next year and just a standing pot, not a hanging baskets. I do love standing container pots. Hanging baskets are a little bit too high maintenance for me. So right here, I've got my heat mats. This one is set to about 68 degrees. Then right here, I've got some heat mats and these are set to about 72 degrees. And then on the floor right here, I was taking the temperature. So I have some ranunculus in here that I am sprouting. I bought some more if you guys saw one of my videos because I needed a few more to fit my entire garden box. But down here, it's about 45 degrees. So I can grow things in here at all different temperatures, which is perfect for these sprouts. And once they start sprouting, I can bring them back up here off the heating mats. As you can see right here, it's 60 degrees. So it's about five o'clock, the sun is going down and that's perfect for my ranunculus. I don't want them to get above 70 degrees. So all of these are doing great. These are my cold hardy ones. The sweet peas like them at cooler temperatures. My stock, I have- So, can I interrupt? Yeah. Sorry, because I just think it looks like these ones are on a heat mat because they're sitting on a heat mat, but this one's not plugged in. Yeah, this one's not plugged in. So, if that seems like it throws you off- And look how incredible they're doing. They're just taking off. Every single one is starting to sprout. So then down here, so during the early winter, when it's like January, we're only getting sunlight for about how many hour, days of hours of, how many daylight hours are we getting? Not very many. What is it? Seven to I six? I would say we're only getting seven. So no, no, like seven, uh, it's like 7.30 AM to 6 PM. So it's something like 10 and a half well, hours. Well, more on the stories, we're not getting enough daylight hours right now. So for my this they need about 12 hours. So I actually have a little, Grow light under here. Let's see if I get it real quick. Um, so I can, and they like it to be a little bit warmer. So they're doing really good. Look at that new growth. So I've been leaving them under here. So they're not even up, up on the top yet. But do you want to tell them what this little guy does? Oh, this is, so I love this thing. This is the, I've already talked about this in one of my videos, but this just tells me what my temperatures are. So let's take a look at it. So that's 72. Well, it's going down a little bit. It was at 71. Well, it, it not only tells you the temperature of it, but if you fall below the target temperature, it turns the heat mat on until it comes up to the set point temperature that you have told it. I have seeds of all sorts that need different temperatures growing in here. You just kind of got to experiment in your greenhouse with these different things. All of our climates are a little bit different. So next thing I wanted to do was show you all of these fun things I bought. So. I went to Lowe's. Okay, I did hit up J&J &J Nursery. And then after that, I was like, I didn't even want lunch. I wanted to go to Lowe's and get some bare root peonies and some hydrangeas and other things that I found there. They just barely stocked some of them at their store. And this is what a greenhouse is awesome for because I can be like, you know what? I know it's not time to put these out in the ground, but I can store them in my greenhouse. And look at these beautiful flowers. So these Sarah Bernards are my absolutely favorite peonies. And so now I can just pop these up. That's gonna be for another video. I just kinda of wanted to show you what I got. Some ferns. I got this Hydrangea Nika Blue. I know they don't love my climates, but I'm totally gonna to experiment and see how well I can do with these. I have some plans for that, but wait for my next video. So I'm gonna actually be able to pop these up and store them in here for two months until I can get them out in the ground. I guess it's more like three months. I'll keep them in here, get a head start on them. 
I love having a greenhouse for that because I just don't have room in my house. I have five kids. They have so much stuff. I'm already kind of jam packed in my house as it is and it's just too messy. And so it's so nice. Like you can grow all of this stuff in your house. You can, but it's a little bit messier. It takes up space. This way I really don't have to worry about that when I already have a lot of stuff in there. So that is probably my favorite thing about the greenhouse. And last but not least, I wanted to talk about just the mental health benefits it gives me. So winters, our winters are really long. I mean, I guess they're not as long as some of you out there, but for me, coming outside and being in the greenhouse gives me that outdoor feel. It's kind of a place of respite. It feels like I'm still gardening, especially when I come in here and it's raining or if it's snowing, the sound of the rain is just magical. Growing seeds inside is just not the same. It doesn't give me that faint, same sense of peace. So it's been really great for my mental health. It definitely gets me through the winters. It's just such an awesome thing and I feel so grateful. I thank you so much hubby for building this beautiful thing for me because it really is such a joy during the winter time. I'm definitely still craving spring. It doesn't fix that spring itch. It's nothing is like being outside, but when I'm in here and you can just look around, Riley, you're supposed to do a 360. Oh, okay. He didn't know that. Well, she calls me hubby on the YouTube Sorry, videos. Sorry, hubby. Only on the YouTube videos. No, I always call you hubby. No, not in real life. Riley? <laughs> <laughs> Sure, I'm always calling you hubby. Nope. Well, just I on, write just hubby. on YouTube. Okay, I guess it's a YouTube <laughs> thing. We all put on our different faces, right? <laughs> but I can see birds. It's just it just gives you that such a great sense of joy. Oh, and there's a deer right there. Well, I had a question about so in the video, we have all four different videos on building this greenhouse, if you want to check that out. And we just show them that it's definitely level with the ground. If you look at it from the outside the most um, that direction you go, it's basically brick right at grade. And if you come all the way this direction, you have about six inches of exposed cinder block on the outside of the greenhouse. So definitely not, it's definitely not dug in below grade at all. We didn't want this door to be kind of like a walkout with steps coming back up to grade. We wanted to just walk straight out. And that's been super nice. I would have hated the walk down steps. Okay, so I had another thought that came to my mind. I had a question about, is this sturdy enough to withstand wind? Of course it is. We built this to last. So that is one of the cons is it wasn't super cheap. I'm just gonna go ahead and be honest and tell you how much it cost. It was like around $5,000. That includes the heat mats. My husband built these wood slats. He built all of this. So that wood was a little bit, but it was definitely worth the investment because we wanted something that we could have until we die. We plan on living here the rest of our lives. I want to die here. And I definitely plan on growing seeds until I die. We She'll actually, probably die in the greenhouse yeah, I probably, as many well, hours as you log in it's here. It's just crazy. I come out here like three times a day just because I love it so much. I don't need to, but it's like every morning and night before I'm thinking about it. And in the morning, it, it actually gets me out of bed because I know I'm going to go walk into my greenhouse, check on my seeds. Mm -hmm. Also, the electricity bills hasn't been very cheap because we started really early, but you don't have to start seeds this early. You could start them indoors. I'm actually gonna start some seeds indoors just to kind of see the difference. So this winter has been colder, so it's been a little bit more expensive, but if you're gonna start your seeds a little bit later, it won't cost you anything because you probably won't have to heat it. So once I start my heat loving annuals, which will be here in a month, month and a half, I don't anticipate having to really have these heaters on. I might have to put them on a little bit at night, but that's not gonna be much of an expense. And then when it does get hot in here, I wanted to add this. So it was like 15 degrees, but when the sun comes out, it gets nearly 90 degrees in here, just like that. So in order to vent it, all I do is open this door right behind my hubby. <laughs> I just kind of crack it like that, not too much. The other day I did open it all the way. And then if it does get a little bit hotter when I'm starting my heat loving annuals, all I do is run my fan right there and then open the door. And that's usually okay for my heat loving ones because they can handle a little bit more heat, but it definitely gets really warm in here when the sun is out. When the sun is not out, you're pretty much running the heaters all day long when it's cold. So start your seeds a little bit later if you don't want to spend as much money. If you do want to start really early, which is me, I start the minute I can, definitely budget for 
the expense of that a little bit. And then one other thing I'm, I would add is we have a neighbor who has a greenhouse that he doesn't heat at all. He does start his stuff later. What he does is if you look back here, we have these black buckets and they kind of serve two purposes. You have water really readily accessible, but also they warm up during the day and then they radiate that little bit of warmth that they get. Um, they radiate that at night. And so they lower the amount of heat that you have to supplement yeah. with. But what he does is he has big 55 gallon um, plastic drums of water um, that are black along his northern northern wall and with that he doesn't actually have to do any heat okay guys i know i covered a lot of stuff if i didn't get to some of your questions comment down below and i will definitely get back to you but if you're asking whether you should build a greenhouse or not i definitely re recommend it 150 percent it's so much fun to get an early start on some of this stuff that i would have to wait a few months it makes growing stuff that are a little bit trickier easier I can store more of my plants that I have to overwinter. I just love it so much. I hope that if you are thinking about building a greenhouse, you should go for it, save some money, budget, especially if you're a gardener that plans on doing it for the rest of your life. I just wanted to add, it took us about two months to build this greenhouse start to finish. We were working on it about four to six hours a day. My husband really is good at building, so anyway thought I would just share all of that with you. I hope to see you in my next videos. Make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell for all of my future updates. I have so many fun plans for this year. So many changes are happening and we'll talk to you later.